Hello and welcome to the Love, Listen, Talk, Repeat podcast. I'm Wendy Capewell, your podcast host, as well as being a counsellor and psychotherapist, author and speaker. In each of these podcast episodes, I'll be joined by various guests, sharing their expertise and experiences on different subjects. So let's get on with this week's show. My guest today is Martha Blessing. She is an author, a healing mentor, a wellness expert, and founder of Next Level Wellness. So, Martha, over to you, because I would like you to introduce yourself. Um, I know you live near, on the borders of uh, of USA, near Canada, um, which sounds really interesting. As as again, I love having having guests from all around the world, because I live in England, and so it's always nice to meet people from around the world. So tell us more about you, Martha. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. And it is so much fun to be able to talk to people from all parts of the world and the country. Uh, I do. I live in Western New York and Canada is right across uh, the river, albeit that we can't get to it right now. But um, yeah, so I have been here in Western New York working as a, a mentor and a healer for most of my life and used to have a brick and mortar uh, wellness center. And about five years ago, I sold that business so that I could devote more of my time to reaching people out in the world globally with this message of how do we really facilitate healing? Mm -hmm. We have so many no matter where we live in the world, we have so many things available to us. We have uh, traditional medicine and and doctors, we have therapists, we have so many options, holistic alternative. In at least here in the States, why aren't people getting better? Why, when we have all, this was my main questions that I kept asking. And I thought, if, if we want to create, if I want to help and serve and create well-being, based on everything that I've come through in my journey and my story, I must be, I must need to ask different questions. Hmm. Right, because the answers weren't coming. The the things that were happening were the same. We're still in the same place. We're still stuck in so many ways with this pain and illness. And why, when we have all these opportunities, are we not getting better? Hmm. So that really has been what I've devoted most of my my career to. I started out as a nurse in Western medicine for 25 years. Wow. And then I went on my own healing journey. Uh, I had three back surgeries. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I reversed a rare and curable cancer. And along those lines, along that journey, I really dug deep into what creates illness. Mm. What's going on here? Because I had this deep belief that the body knew how to be healthy. So what was really creating this illness? Why are we still taking pills and having surgeries and, and not getting better. Like it's still sick care. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's quite a big question that one, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a big question. Yeah. I think I, I, yeah, when I ponder as well, we have all these advancement in medicine. We have, we're supposed to be at least in, in your country and, and mine, we have better health care. We've got, you know, better nutrition, we're better, better informed, and yet, and yet still people aren't, as you say, recovering, or they're getting sick for whatever reason, and it's more about dis-ease rather than disease. Yes. So it, it's, it's a big question. Hmm. That's a, that, you hit the nail on the head, that's the big distinction. Yeah. And to move towards that disease is the answer. Yeah. To towards the dis-ease 
rather than denying a part of ourselves. This, especially in the, in the US, it's this, they say that it's an integrated healthcare, right? They call it managed care, but it's really not because there's still this separation between the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual, they're still treating each thing individually. Yeah. And, and yet we're one being, one body, one heart and soul and spirit that's, you can't leave any piece out. No, you can't. And I think that's the problem, as you say, a lot with, and I'm not knocking Western medicine because what we do without it, but right. equally they're not necessarily making that connection of the, the holistic part of us that we are holistic and you can't you can't ignore one part so yeah. yeah what i what i came through in the in my own journey what led me out of those places and into really digging deep into this work a lot of people come to me when they've done everything else mm -hmm. and the big question is what's the missing piece yeah what am I missing? That's their big, because we do have the internet, right? So there's so much opportunity to look and investigate and explore. But the intention is still for many people, let me find something that will annihilate whatever I am experiencing without getting to that root or that core cause. Yeah knowing having a knowing and a truth that our body does know how to be healthy so what is what is getting in the way and and if the piece of we're energy beings mm. is what became that clue and that missing piece and how do we look at everything that is because we know this right when when we go to the doctor here and they want to know how the heart is working they hook you up to an ekg an electrical cardiogram that they're measuring the waves in the heart. Yeah. So we know that we're energy. Yeah. The question is what's getting in the way of that energy? Yeah. And I think that leads us on to what we were going to talk about today, because what part does shame play in that? Because it does play a big part in my view. In a huge, in a huge way, in a huge way. And I'm really going out on a limb here to make this statement, but it, it is my truth. And I believe so far, my experience has been with a lot of clients. It's, it's their situation as well. I would say that, you know, we hear that, I don't know how that, what they say over there, but we hear that 90% or more of illness is caused by stress. And what is stress? Stress is our mental and emotional and feeling responses to what's happening in our lives. Yeah. Right? It's our, it's our perception. It's what our conscious, subconscious, and ego brain all kind of throw in the mix what we think that wound and that story is. And most of the time, the illness is created by a wound and the root of that, or the not the root, but the residual, what's left over from that wound is shame buried in, in the tissues and the cells in the body. Mm. And that's what affects the energy. We want to do anything to not feel that shame mm. and yet so many of us carry that around whether it belongs to us or not yeah yeah yes that's that's the key right whether it belongs to us or not we think we and we do we take on a lot of from zero from from in the womb till seven years old that conscious mind we don't have the ability to reject what's being programmed into us mm. so if we have heard stories and we took them on as truth and beliefs 
Now, it's not to say that our parents didn't have good intentions, but they're carrying their own shame. Yeah. And so it gets passed on and passed on and passed on and passed on. And I look at that as we talk about, well, I have an illness because it's genetic. Well, there's genetic DNA and there's spiritual DNA. And a lot of that shame gets transferred through that spiritual DNA. And then we're spending our entire, this is, you know, how I came through all people say, well, how did you get hurt? And how did you heal? And it was looking at the shame. It was looking at all of the places that I had stored and buried all, you know, the abusive situations that happened in my life, the things that my, my family and my parents programmed me to believe. And we take on this shame and then that core wound either shows up as I'm unworthy or I'm unlovable and we're carrying this around and it's buried in our tissues, right? Because the brain is talking to the body. So when we have those thoughts about being unworthy or being not good enough, the body is listening. Mm. And the ego is trying to protect us, but we're feeling that in our body when it, it, we're actually burying it. Yeah. We're burying it because who wants it? And so it's so interesting, right? In, in the location of where our symptoms are. That's why I always tell people, let's get at the core cause. And my gift as a medical intuitive is that I'm able to see that core cause in the body and then help people remove it, right? But, you know, my personal experience, if surgery was the answer, why did I have to have three back surgeries? Mm. And a lot of people say, well, I had an accident or I had an injury, I had surgery, but I'm not better because that shame is still there. The energy of the shame right. is still buried. As I say, the issues are in the tissues, right? That shame or guilt is in there. So in your experience, do you see that, you know, from a, from a medical point of view, do you see that shame is held in different parts of the body, depending on what the shame could be? Or what, the what the shame could be and, and maybe what it's around. Like for me, I had sexual abuse as a child, so it was no mistake that my low back was right. causing problems, right? Okay. And what I find is interesting is that, you know, we can... We can forgive the situation or the person because right. this was a big, uh, it took me a long time to work through this idea, right? We can forgive the person. So I was like, I forgave them. I forgave them. I'm not angry. I'm not. But when those events happened, we had the shame and that's the part that gets buried. Yeah. Or we shut down like I've, I had closed off my heart or, you know, like I'd go to the chiropractor and they would try to do an adjustment in my thoracic spine, the back of the spine. We hide things back there so we don't have to see it, right? Because who can turn around and look back there? We can't see it. Okay. <clears throat> so when it's in the, in the backside, it's something from the past. Right that we're, we're, we're wanting to not experience and not see and not feel, but the, it's actual when we move towards it and release that shame, there is a gift in there of some kind. Mm. And so often it's, it's what our life's path and purpose is, right? It will lead us to everything is happening for us, not to us. Yes, and I, and I, I, I can see that because I think you weren't trying to suppress the shame, trying to suppress those thoughts, those beliefs, those events. And I'm not saying we have to not wallowing in the past or, or being stuck in the past, but exploring it and being interested in it rather than trying to suppress it or avoid it. I think that can be so damaging. Yeah. 
And I mean, that's the problem and the issue is that a pill is never going to fix that. Mm. And quite honestly, broccoli and red peppers aren't going to fix it either. No. Right? Like we think, oh, well, if I just eat a clean, healthy diet, I'll be fine. Mm. And we all know someone, no matter where we live in the world, who did everything right, who did all the perfect, I exercised, I did this, I did that, but how did I get cancer? Yeah. Or how did I get whatever? But if we look at cancer as a virus that is attacking itself, it's literally, I look at where am I attacking myself? Where am I not loving myself? Mm -hmm. And especially for women with breast cancer, you know, um, we, so many are taught to just be of service and giving, 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 give to everyone to our families, to our jobs, to everything. And then so many women wake up, you know, in that peri post menopause and wonder what's going on and, and discover they have this, you know, breast cancer and it's, I haven't loved myself or I've done all these things seeking and looking for approval because I had so much shame. Mm. So there it's held in the, in the center in our heart these aren't just, you know, for women, it's, it's feeding ourselves, the breast feed the children, but they feed life, our love and our heart of self love and self acceptance. Hmm. So if we can't feel that self love and self acceptance, because we've got so much shame, that energy is going to get shut down hmm. ourselves in that area, right? And that's quite interesting because um, I had breast cancer uh, about 30 years ago. Wow. And uh, I've always been intrigued about, I knew it wasn't, you know, what is a cancer? It's, it's, uh, it's quite a subject. I haven't explored it a great deal. Why? Because I didn't want to go there, basically. Yeah. But there's yeah. something there. I, I knew it wasn't just, it wasn't, just a uh, an area that of course you know it wasn't just physical I knew there was more to it than that because yeah. basically what you know cells reproduce all the time so what turns them into a one of the cancers because we don't right. know what's a cancer what was it so what was it in my life and you know there have been so many traumas in my life going back to childhood the re rejection of my, my mother um, you know, there have been, um, I had polio when I was four years old as well. So that's another one of which I was very fortunate to recover. I was thinking I'm like a cat with nine lives because I had, yeah, my body has had, gone through quite a lot really, but yeah. um, I'm very fortunate. But, and then the kind of broken marriages and so on. So yeah, what was it? Um, it's interesting, isn't it? That how our body will react or, what that dis-ease will manifest itself in some way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the question to, that I would ask is, who, who did you change and become as a person because of it? Right? I think there was something about the, the shame that I carried from a child. I was one kind of person, not, I wasn't authentic, I wasn't true to myself. But as a result of the cancer, I changed to a degree, but not fully. I didn't learn fully, which was interesting. I, I had the intention, but I didn't carry it through at that point. Mm -hmm. I still carried on in a, in a, my path wasn't as clear or as authentic as I believe it is now. So I didn't fully learn from that experience, which is interesting. Yeah. But, and you know, they say when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? So <laughs> it, it opened up because, and that's the beauty of it, right? We do have free will. Yeah. We can choose to say, uh, I talk about this 
in some of my videos and, and workshops and classes about the four levels of awareness for healing. And at each level, depending what your goal and your intention is, if you want true freedom. So when you are at that level, you might have gone from two to three and saying, well, I think I have a little bit of responsibility in creating this. Right. In hindsight, you say, well, I, I didn't feel like I was my authentic self. Ah, bingo. Okay. At least I have that awareness. I may not take full action and responsibility on it right now, but I've gotten the awareness. And when I'm ready, I can go further and deeper if I, if I choose to, if I really want to be fully embodied in my empowerment and my self-healing right but at each stage you would have had to take more responsibility for yourself at that level maybe it was just too much maybe you were like you know just let me survive this for now and then I'll look at you know you wouldn't have been the first person to make a bargain with God or you know that higher power that says just let me live and then I'll change you know yeah yeah I just found it interesting though because yes it, that was a that was a life-threatening you know situation that I had to face but um it it did I had a different perspective of life certainly but I think yeah I there was still more learning to go on more awareness and and I think I mean I I don't think we ever stop developing changing learning um and so on so I I think there is you can't say, well, now I'm now I'm sorted because his right. life isn't right. like that. But it, it's interesting that I thought I'd learned. I thought, I believed at that point, this is life changing. This is la 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 la. But actually, it wasn't. It, it like you say, it was one of those levels of awareness, or so it was a stepping stone to that next part of my journey, if you like. It opened the door. Yeah. Opened the door, but not I. I, yeah, we can't live with regrets, but I think when I, if I look back, oh, if only I had learned a bit more at that point. Um, but hey, you know, that we can't live with regrets. I learned and um, it was just part of it. But yeah, but yeah, I guess I carried a lot. I did carry a lot of shame around with me. So I think there was something very much around that. Not, be, you know, the, the not good enough followed me from very early on. And then that that carried on um, because I, it's I felt I was never lived up to what my parents wanted. Yeah, uh, what they believe. What happens? Um, I I have worked a lot with anxiety, with depression through my own experience of it. Right, because back to that idea of being energetic. If we think of our body as a container of energy, when most of our energy and our thoughts are going into survival. In other words, what can I do? We're in our head spinning round and round and round on that loop on that gerbil wheel going, what can I do today to avoid feeling pain? Mm. And everything, you know, emotional pain or stress and all of our energy is just looping in our brains. Underneath that in our actual physical body, we've shut down. Yeah. Because we don't want to feel the pain, the emotions and the feelings and energetically, like our hearts are closed and shut off. The energy can't move and flow like it's supposed to through the cells, through the chakras, through the meridians, through, you know, this whole life force that we are breathing. Mm -hmm. And when we look energetically at the root chakra system at the root, it's our safety and security and our right to be here. Yeah. And we feel so much shame and we feel so unworthy and so unlovable. There's no energy down there. And that's what causes that deficient root chakra is what causes depression. Yeah. So I, I, I will take it a step further that shame is, is the root cause of depression energetically we're we're so invested you know like you have the trauma you have that memory of that trauma and then everything in the ego is invested in we're not going to experience that again mm. 
let me run from all of this stuff. Yeah. And so that's where the pill and a bill medicine comes from. Just give me a pill so I don't have to feel this anymore. And searching for that gratification or that quick fix, which is often those material things that we believe will fix us. And then that is never enough. So we're searching for the next one and the next one and the next one. And, and yeah, we're never really dealing, staying with the pain, experiencing the pain, learning from the pain is something that most people don't want to, don't want to experience. But I think we can learn so much from just experience and being with it. And then, yeah, I, I, and, and trying to understand what, what that message is or what we're learning from it, yeah. I think we can well, what's funny it. is people don't want to be with the pain, but they're being with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm avoiding imagining I'm in constant pain. I'm so unhappy. I'm so in so much emotional, physical pain, but actually, yeah, and yet not wanting to go there. And what I find is interesting is people will start, they'll start that journey, but they'll go, it's too much. And so, and then they go back and try it again but it's almost like going towards the fire and then pulling back before you get too hot but if you could only just persevere and go through those flames then you come out the other side but instead you're constantly walking towards the fire feeling that heat and coming back and keep experiencing that instead as you say going through it and that that energy movement yeah yeah and and it's that core wound that feels and makes us perceive uh because anxiety energetically speaking is just an excess of energy yeah it's it's energy welling up in you know either the the stomach the heart the throat or the head it's just an excess it's an imbalance of energy but the gift is that it's trying to make its way out so you don't have to experience it anymore. Yeah. It's actually a good thing. And you can sit in that, in that still space that I teach people and allow it to come up and allow it to actually pass through you and pass out of you. And that's, that's the release. Mm. I had um, some of the things that I worked through recently in the last year, my mom got COVID and she passed away. And we had a very much of a roller coaster of a, of a relationship. She was 92 years old and um, very independent, but she had, she was not on any prescription drugs. She was driving her own car, living in her own place at 92. And um, that's all the shame. I was just buried in shame from my relationship with her my whole life. It, it just kept, it kept coming, right? Even though I had enough sense to forgive and understand it all, I still had that emotion in my body from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, the grace and the healing of her passing, now I can release this because it's not continuously being dumped on me still. And mm -hmm. I could allow my heart to open and feel safe. I could trust myself. I could really step, like you say, into that space of the authentic self-love, self-acceptance, being okay with who I am in all of these areas of life. And as that happened, I started to have pain in both my arms. Wow. Now, most people, would be at the doctors. I did not go to the doctor because I have enough experience with all of this kind of stuff that I sat in my stillness and sat in my meditation. And I mean, it was very difficult. Some of it, I couldn't even really exercise and use my one arm. But what I recognize is that it's my heart, all of that energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed these are the laws of the universe, no matter who you are, where you live. In quantum physics, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. 
It can only change form. So that shame has an energy. And you bury 50 plus years of shame in your tissues in your body somewhere. When it comes out, you are going to feel it and experience it in some way. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. So that sitting with the pain, literally, I sit with it, and this is what I teach people to do, is sit with it and, and move towards it and get the information from it and see why it's there and what it's doing as it's moving out. Mm. You know, so some people will, be, will go to the dark side and say, oh my gosh, I have MS or Parkinson's or some horrible disease versus um, I'm going to sit with this and feel it. And so I know that the truth is, is that this energy is moving. The shame is moving out of me. I'm stepping into more freedom and it literally wants to come up and out of my heart and out of my arms because those are the areas where we give and receive in the world. Right. The arms are the extension of our heart, right? So for me, it's allowing this to move out of my heart where it's been closed up and locked up all these years. And there are times where it feels a little bit like tingling because that's what energy does. Right. It could feel hot. It could feel cold. Yeah. Uh, and then I do things to help it move out. Now, what if I just went to the doctor and took a pill or took the Advil and I shut that off? Yeah. Then I'm losing touch with my own being, my own self and what's actually happening in my body because I'm shutting it off. Yeah. So there's that dance, right? Step in, step out, step in, step out. It's too much. But when we feel that it's too much, I always encourage people to, to stay with it and be with it, right? Because that it's moving its way out. It's moving its way out. And we're, I think, if we have never loved and accepted ourselves, that that's really what feels too big. Yeah. Gosh, absolutely fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for sharing this, Martha. Um, Thank you. What, 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 what do you, what can people take away with them today? What, what is one thing that maybe could start them on that relinquishing that shame, dealing with that shame? Yeah, yeah. Recognizing that it's energy. Recognizing that, you know, it's an emotion. And it's a feeling and it can feel scary, but it's energy. And you actually do have the ability to move that energy, to control the flow and the movement of the energy, right? We think we're not in control. Mm. We actually are in control of our energy and our body. We can take that responsibility back if we've given it away somewhere. And just to yeah. remember its energy, if we, if we sit still in our place, we are safe and we can move that energy and allow it to pass through us. That's if, really, really, yeah, that's there's a really, a really thought provoking. So I, I hope people take that away with them. That's great. Yeah. And get, yeah. and get the assistance, right? From me, from you, from, you know, yeah. have a guide. Yeah. Will help you move through your sticking points. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put all your details in the show notes because I'm sure people will want to get in touch with you. But one easy way that people can contact you. Yes, absolutely. They can go straight to my website at marthablessing.com. And there's, so uh, there's, a, there's a page there with, with several free tools that I invite them to uh, explore. That's, that's great. Thank you so much for this. Um, I've enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Martha. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'd love to hear from you and what you think. So do get in touch. If you'd like to learn more about me, how I help people who are struggling with issues relating to their personal life or relationships, 
as well as finding out how you can work with me, go to my website www.wendycapewell.co.uk where you can find my contact details and book a free call with me. You really don't have to struggle alone. Until next time, take care. Bye.